we're coming in terms of the way we're using our natural resources, we're skating along the edges of limits. We are really understanding this Earth system, how all those pieces work together across the atmosphere, the land, the water. We're also really understanding the human impact. We need more tools to help people to think in the long term, to envision everything that we're doing as being part of a process that will unfold over time. We are looking at issues of things that are changing, higher energy prices, a shortage of water, land use change, climate change. This is making us look at the world a different way. And that then makes us look at how we live our lives and we do our jobs. Increasingly, people are aware of the impact of changing climate on their lives. And that means there's business opportunity here. We're essentially planting the seeds for what the future is going to be right now. Game technologies, visualization technologies, they're very powerful tools for helping people to think beyond the scales of just our immediate experience and of our quarterly profits. That's a very, very powerful tool. We're lacking right now, I think, a lot of the cultural mechanisms that have been embedded within a number of cultures from around the world for thousands of generations, where people are encouraged to think about seven generations out, where people speak for future generations. And we desperately need that capacity right now. And I think we're totally capable of it. Let's work together to understand what we see today, how does it look with respect to the past, and what do we collectively think might happen in the future. And that collective view of the future is not just about the climate system. It's about our long-term development choices. You have the National Climatic Data Center, very much a focus of climate for the nation and even beyond. You have now the Cooperative Institute for Climate and Satellites, which is helping to bring in the academic institutions uh, from Raleigh and Chapel Hill and beyond. And now the next piece is that private sector piece. How can we begin to interact with the private sector to begin to develop climate services to support the public. An exciting project that's really working for this is Worldviews. That's Dave McConville's company, Illuminati, working with NOAA's Ned Gardner, and participating with us at UNC Asheville's NEMAC. We're all working together to really look at this Earth system thinking, this big cosmic approach. The Worldviews Network mission is to use authentic scientific information about Earth render it in a beautiful way and situate discussions about regionally important issues so that decision makers and citizens can come together and have a common platform for discussion. What we have here is the geodome. It's an immersive visualization environment doing real-time interactive data visualization on Earth and space science. We have clients in the form of NASA, NOAA, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a number of universities, school systems, museums. We work primarily with interactive gaming engines that really enable us to create these imaginative spaces. I'm excited about the, the kind of innovation we could see coming out of this to try and educate the public. When I was sitting in the dome, I just could picture my two-year-old daughter in a couple years sitting in a room with a teacher walking you through the uh, solar system and, you know, being able to raise your hand and ask a question and say, you know, what's that planet right there? And you can zoom in and, and discuss that planet in real time, we'll be able to do the same thing in trying to understand climate. Businesses small and large can team up with the scientific community and federal agencies like NOAA and the National Climatic Data Center to explore how and why climate matters to real people in real places and find the opportunities to bring climate information to the table in a way that advances economic development, keeps communities sustainable, There are games today on Facebook played by 100 million people at the same time. I mean, which other media go to these numbers and this kind of power of engagement? Our visual cortex is the high bandwidth way we perceive. And so if you want to talk to people, the adage that a picture is worth a thousand words is really true. The face of the world is a global strategy game that deals with real science and real consequences. You are the, the hero placed into a world put in chaos. Video games can deal with 
some of the most pressing issues we have today, like climate change, like poverty, like human rights, because video games are interactive and they let you dive into the situation and make choices and view the consequences. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Agency and their National Climatic Data Centre is based here in Asheville. And the work that they have done, collecting climate data, meteorological data, ice cores, everything about how our world works, is the, the root source of everything we do in the game. The fact that the data in this game is actually from NOAA and the National Climatic Data Centre, it kind of makes it more powerful. These are actually things that our world leaders are having to think about. You can see the sea levels rise, you can see forests come and go, you can see ice retreat to the far north, you can see impacts all over the place. It's just really puts into perspective what a lot of people are having to go through at this point because this is what could really be happening in 40, 50, 60 years, depending on the kind of decisions that our world leaders are making right now. There are so many things that we could be helping people to understand in terms of taking a more comprehensive perspective on global change issues. Getting to a future that we want and that is sustainable requires all of us working together. Asheville is at the hub of exploring what that means for climate information. The opportunity has never been stronger to, to, to take something from one field and put it into another, to have this kind of this fertile cross-pollination of agencies like NASA, with individual artists, with scientists, with politicians, with the people on the street. And I think that's, that's something that's new. It's gonna play out in ways that none of us can imagine. It's gonna be exciting. I'm excited by the future.